come and teach, preach on, <clears throat> on the Lord Jesus Christ. I've entitled this, Por la Via Dolorosa. It's, it's the road less traveled. Amen. We don't like to go down that road. We ourselves wouldn't have gone down that road because it's a road less traveled. It's a road that <clears throat> that only he could could have took, taken. You know, the Lord, he, he went to Calvary for you and I. And, you know, first of all, I guess I want to just say thank you again to to everyone for for the baptismal yesterday. Amen. Amen. And another soul was added to the kingdom. Yes, and amen. Thank the you. The heavens Jesus. rejoiced and we yes. be along with them. Amen. Amen. And, you know, we serve an awesome God. Amen. So <clears throat> we we as the people of God, we we serve the Lord and and sometimes you know, we, uh, you know, the word. Of, we don't believe the word of God. We don't believe the word of God, and and um, you know that's why we a lot of times we don't do what we're supposed to do because we don't believe the word of God, and you know, um, I'm gonna, we sing a song. This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary praise, and this ain't no ordinary church. That's right, yes. This ain't no ordinary place. This is straight street apostolic Pentecostal ministries. Yes. We teach and preach the apostolic doctrine. Amen. And, and a lot of times this apostolic doctrine, it, it doesn't go along with what everyone else is teaching and preaching. Mm -hmm. Because... You know, we uh, we have a closer walk with the Lord. We 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 do what the Bible says. You know, and uh, the Apostle Paul said, if anyone else comes teaching and preaching the Word of God, let them be accursed. So I'm gonna teach and preach something that that you know. We're we're ahead a week. Mm -hmm. All right. We're ahead a week. They um, people won't be teaching and preaching about about the the Lord, His death, burial, and resurrection till next week. Mm. Okay. They'll be teaching it on their Easter Sunday service, and and the Lord would have already went to Calvary a week later or, or a week earlier. Okay. And uh, so with the help of the Lord, I'm going to teach and preach that, uh, you know, the Lord, he, he was crucified on Passover, hmm. and today is Passover. It okay. began yesterday. Mm -hmm. Passover began yesterday at sunset, and will end today at sunset. So today, over a little over 2,000 years the Lord was crucified. Okay. He was crucified a little over two thousand years ago. And you ain't gonna you probably ain't gonna hear it till next week. Some some will hear about it next week. But the truth is that he was crucified on Passover, not Easter. Or he he didn't they'll say he resurrected on Easter. That's what it is. He resurrected on Easter and like I said, they'll probably preach the the death, burial, and resurrection now, <clears throat> on Easter Sunday, and well, okay, like the Word of God teaches. Remember, we have to blame the Word of God. We blame the Word of God. Okay, so I'm gonna blame Jesus. It's His Word, not mine. So I'm gonna read um, Isaiah 52, verse 14. We don't, we don't do things because everyone else does them. 
We don't go along with what everyone else does. Not if it's wrong. Okay. Not if it's wrong. We, we won't be there. We won't, we won't do it. Okay. The majority don't rule. Okay. The majority doesn't rule in, in the word of God. The truth is what guides the people. Okay. It's not what everyone else is doing. So in Isaiah 52, 14, it says, As many as were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Okay. And uh, I'll just read verse 15 and we'll pray. So shall he sprinkle many nations, the kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, shall they consider. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the privilege that I have to stand before your people, to teach and to preach what you put in my heart. In Jesus' name, let these words not return back empty, Lord. Let them go and do what they're supposed to do in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray and I... I'm asking you to help me to teach your word, Lord, in Jesus' name, to teach it, to preach it, and give us all the understanding that we need for it. In Jesus' name, walk and dwell amongst your people, Jesus, for you're invited in this place, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way in this service, Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Remember Isaiah is a book of prophecy and this was a prophecy of Jesus. Okay. This was a prophecy of Jesus. So I'm going to read verses 53 or chapter Isaiah 53, 1 through 12. It says, Who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground he hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire you know people they uh they say see jesus he wasn't a good looking man he wasn't good looking look it says right here it says right here says there's no beauty that we should desire him. Well, no, we need to keep reading. We need to read the rest of the story, okay? This is talking about when he was, when he was on the way to the cross and, and you know, all the, the punishment that he went through. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. We're healed by those stripes that he took upon <coughs> himself. Amen. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath, hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. The iniquity of us all. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He took on upon himself our iniquities. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. <clears throat> he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep 
before her shears is dumb. So, so he openeth not his mouth. That's what it means, that he was dumb. He opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. <clears throat> For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So that was a prophecy of, of the Lord. <clears throat> of the Lord when he when he came and, and he or a part of him came and dwelt in that body and and he took upon himself all of our sins. Mm -hmm. And that he who knew no sin took our sin. Amen. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned, they needed to be redeemed. Okay? There needed to be a redeemer. And the Bible teaches us that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Okay? It was a lamb slain. There was a lamb slain and the Lord clothed them with coats. Okay. The Lord clothed them. Okay. You know, we don't we don't see that an animal was slain, but in Hebrews 9.22, it tells us that without the shedding of blood, and I'll just go there in Hebrews 9. 922 says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. <clears throat> and without shedding of blood is no remission. See, without the shedding of blood is no remission of sins. So the Lord, he, he shed blood on, at the very beginning. At the very beginning, he shed blood. And Adam and Eve's souls were redeemed. <clears throat> Those animal sacrifices couldn't make one perfect. They couldn't take away the sin. Those animal sacrifices that the priest would, would have to sacrifice yearly. You know, they couldn't take away the sins of, of the people. Sin was just pushed forward. It just kept being pushed forward to Calvary. Through the offering of Jesus Christ, it only took one time. It only took one time. That's all that was needed the for, for the forgiveness of sins forever. Amen. And you can find that in Hebrews 10, 11 through 12. In Hebrews 10, 11 and 12 says... By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily and offering, daily ministering and offering oftentimes the sacrifices which can never take away sins. See, not only yearly, but daily. Daily, these uh, the, this blood of animals 
they couldn't take away the sins of the people. But Jesus came and he offered himself one time. That's all it took, just once. In verse 16 says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. See, this was talking about the Holy Ghost in verse 15. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. See? So when we receive the Holy Ghost, that's what we receive. We receive we, the Lord. He puts his laws into our hearts and in our minds. They are written. So, John the Baptist <clears throat> introduced Jesus as the Lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. That's how John the Baptist introduced him. In John 1, 29, he even took the place of a murderer. Okay. He took the place of a murderer, yes. Barabbas. Yeah. And um, Jesus out Calvary, he wasn't a pretty sight. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Matthew 26. It says... <clears throat> I'll start with verse 65. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him. And others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ. Who is he that smote thee? That's what they did to him. There were, you know, he, uh, the Bible says that we're a peculiar people. And it doesn't mean that we're weird or anything. It just means that that word peculiar is... We were redeemed. We are redeemed. We were purchased with the blood of Jesus. We were purchased for the price here. Okay, This is the price that was paid. Okay, Jesus took it all for us. Okay? He took it for the team, as some would say. He did it for us. And, you know, he, uh, he was there before. I think it was Pilate. And they, they found he wasn't guilty of anything. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know what, but let me scourge him. Let me first scourge him, then you could have him. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and these are the things that they did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of stuff like this, you would think that uh, <clears throat> people would, you know, with what they did to him, the, the court system today would probably, you know, they'd probably say, see, that was unjust, that was uncalled for. Mm -hmm. okay? That was uncalled for that, that Jesus went through all that. Right. But yet he did it for you and I. Yes. Okay? He did it for us. Amen. And, um, you know, he, he didn't, they didn't take his life. He gave it, the Bible says. He gave his life. Yes. Mm -hmm. He did it. Amen. So those are some of the things that he that they did. Mm -hmm. They spit on his face, buffeted him, smote him with the palms of their hands. They covered his face. They blindfolded him. In, in Luke 22, 64. It's almost the same story, right? It's almost the same story, different, different writers. In Luke twenty-two sixty-four 
says, And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that smote thee? And many others blasphemously spake they against him. And as I was reading, I, I, I thought I somewhere, didn't they pluck his beard? Mm -hmm. They plucked his beard. Mm -hmm. you know, they plucked his beard. And as I was reading it, I, I saw that they, they did it. Probably wasn't there, but the soldiers mocked him. They mocked him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They put a crown of thorns and put it upon his head. And like they say, don't think they were these little thorns. Don't think they were these little thorns that you get walking in the field. No, right. these were some big, the big thorns. Right. And when they put it on him, don't think they just, they just politely put it on his head. No, they. They put it on his head and they, I'm sure they grinded it in there, made sure that it wouldn't fall off. Mm -hmm. okay. They made sure that when they put that crown of thorns on his head, that it stuck in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he took that crown of thorns upon his head <clears throat> so that we can have our own crown, our crown of righteousness. Okay. So he took that crown of thorns so we can have a crown of righteousness. Yes. <clears throat> they spit on him and took the reed and smoked him on the head. They smoked him on the head. In Matthew 27. Matthew 27, 28 through 30. Says, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. See? After they did all that, they they took his took that scarlet robe and they put his own clothes on him. You know, they were just mocking him. The king of the Jews, they were mocking him. Yeah. <clears throat> Verse 32 says, And as they came out, they found a man of serene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. See, that cross that he was carrying was heavy. It was heavy. You know, he had, they had just beat him and then having to carry his own cross to be, to be crucified. You know, he, he carried his cross <clears throat> and when he get when he got heavy they compelled Simon to carry his cross because sometimes our own cross the Bible says you know we need to pick up our cross and you know and sometimes our cross gets too heavy and, and we also need help yes. Amen. we also need help carrying our cross yes, we do. that's why you know I was thinking that the Lord, he, he wants the people of God to, to marry believers in the Lord. Yes, amen. You marry believers in the Lord so that you can help one another. That's right. So you can help one another. You give your life to the Lord. And if you don't know the Lord, so that you can help one another 
to carry one another's cross. Yes, Because sometimes it gets heavy. Yes. When one of us, when one falls, the other can help the other up. Yes. Because mm -hmm. it's not easy to to serve the Lord on your own, yeah. and the Lord knows. <clears throat> He took the stripes upon his back so that by his stripes we would be healed. Amen. And there's two verses that say that. And one we, is we were healed and one says we are healed. One is for the past and one is for the present. We are healed. By his stripes we are healed for the present. So his that it's, it's still healing today. God is Amen. still healing today. Even. Yes. yes. Amen. It's, it didn't go away. Right. It was for then and it's for now. That's right. Amen. Amen. They nailed his, cro his hands and his feet to the cross. <clears throat> so that with the laying on of our hands, people that are sick will recover. Amen. And that with our feet, the gospel would reach out into all the world. Yes. Right? Yes. How blessed are the, are the feet of them that carry the gospel. That's right. So they nailed his hands and, and his feet to the cross to bind him, to keep him from doing those things. And, yes. and yet, our hands are free. Our hands are free. We can do those things. Yes. Amen. We can carry the gospel. Yes. Jesus hung naked on the cross. He hung naked on the cross. Yeah. In Matthew 27, 35 says, And they crucified him, and they parted his garments. See? They parted his garments casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. See? He hung naked. He instituted the Lord's Supper as a remembrance of his death. Okay? When we take the Lord's Supper, it's to remember his death. We do it in memory of him and of his death. We do it in remembrance of him. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Mm -hmm. We do show his death till he come. His side was pierced with a spear and forthwith came out blood and water. He also gave us the Holy Ghost as a testimony of His resurrection. When we receive the Holy Ghost, that's a testimony that He resurrected. Yes. That's the biggest sign there that He resurrected. He says, I need to go away. If I don't go away, I can't send the Comforter. That's right. mm -hmm. So He sent the Comforter. Amen. You know, some things we, uh, sometimes I got an example here that somebody, um, I worked at a job and somebody, um, the, the boss, he, uh, he says, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go and buy you guys, uh, I'm going to buy you and this other guy a, a kit. A DeWalt kit. I'm going to buy you guys a sawzall drill and whatever you need to do the job. And he says, and after the job is done, you just going to keep it. <clears throat> okay. So some things, even though that he, he gave it to us as a gift, it was something we worked for, right? Mm -hmm. We had to work for it. We earned it. Right. But... Our salvation, our salvation, we didn't have to earn it. Right. There's nothing you could have done. Right. There's nothing you could have done to have earned our salvation. He freely did it. 
He gave his life for us. So even though we didn't earn this gift of salvation, let us treasure our salvation. We need to treasure our salvation. Jesus paid dearly for us. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And we can't let no one take our crown. We can't let nobody take our crown. That's what the Bible says. Let no one take your crown. Okay. Let no one steal your victory, your blessing. It says, for, for a good man, some would dare give their life for all. Someone would dare give their life for her. Okay. And maybe even for their enemies, they would, some would dare do it. And yet Jesus did. He gave his life for, for even those two thieves on the cross. He gave his life for them. He, he gave his life in exchange for Barabbas, the, the one, the murderer. When we willfully sin, when we sin willfully, it's like crucifying the Lord again. It's like putting the Lord back up on the cross and put him to an open chain. In Hebrews 6, 6. Hebrews 6, 6. It says, If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. See? So when we sin, that's what we do. We put the Lord back up on the cross. We put him back on the cross. When we don't believe in the resurrection of the saints, we put the crown of thorns on his head again. And when we don't believe in healing anymore, we whip him all over again. When, when you don't believe in healing, you whip him all over again. And when we don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit, we nail his hands to the cross. <clears throat> and when we don't believe this gospel anymore, we nail his feet to the cross again. Mm. When we don't believe this word of God anymore, we it's like putting his back on the cross, nailing, nailing his feet mm. to the cross. Mm. That's why we need to believe the word of God. Mm. We need to believe this word of God. Even when the majority don't believe it. Mm. Even when they don't believe that that <clears throat> that the Lord was crucified right. today. Okay? Today, over 2,000 years ago. Because okay? we might be the only ones. We might be the only ones, maybe a few others, that, that believe that he was crucified today. Okay? But even when, when we're the only ones, we still need to believe the Word of God. We need to be grave. We need to be sold on the Word of God. Yeah. He says to buy the truth and sell it not. Amen. We need to pay the price. Yes. We need to pay the price. You know, the, um, when the Lord, he, uh, <clears throat> the Bible says, talking about the, the ten virgins, okay, there were five that had the oil. They were waiting for the bridegroom to come. And five of them were wise because they had oil. They had plenty of oil. And there was five others that didn't have oil. Okay. And they, um, they tried to get some oil from the other five. And... Um, they ended up having to go get their own oil. Mm. They had to go get their own oil, and while they went to go get it, the bridegroom came, and they lost out. They lost out because of that. And what's um, 
the Lord said, they came knocking. And the Lord says, I, I, I don't even know you. Mm -hmm. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Mm -hmm. I never knew you. And these people, five out of ten, what, what does that make it? Fifty percent? Mm -hmm. Fifty percent, right? Mm -hmm. So that would mean if you would take 50% and if you take it, everyone that's here today, if the Lord comes and only half go with the Lord, that's 50%. That means half would make it and half wouldn't, right? This is, that's, the, that's in the Word of God. When the Lord came, or not when the Lord came, when the Lord destroyed the earth, when he destroyed the earth with the flood, how many made it? How many made the flood? How many survived the flood? Wasn't it eight? Eight? Only eight souls survived the flood. Out of how many? Sixteen would have been fifty percent. That's if there were fifty, fifth or sixteen people here on the earth at that time. That's fifty percent, but it's even smaller than that, right? Because yeah. there had to have been more than sixteen. Yeah. So whatever number there was, who knows? You can just throw a number out there, any number, out of eight. That's probably less than 1%. Mm -hmm. Less than 1% made it. Mm -hmm. Same thing when the Lord, when the Lord took the um, <coughs> Lot and his family, when he took them out of Sodom and Gomorrah, when he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, how many souls survived? How many souls survived? Oh, let me back up. When the... When the Lord destroyed the flood, when the Lord destroyed destroyed the earth with the flood, what happened to the babies? What happened to the little children? They lost out. They lost out. There was no, they, the children didn't make it. The babies didn't make it. Okay, That's in the Word of God. That is found in the Word of God. Okay. So that means they lost out too. They lost out too, the children. Let's see. In <clears throat> Genesis 7, verse 7, and Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. So only eight souls made it. You know, and, uh, you know I'm not going to teach and preach about the flood, but you would have thought that these... That would, you, you would have thought that that would have been an, an example of testimony when they, when they saw the animals coming in on their own. These animals came in on their own, came okay, into the ark. And they had better sense than, than the people. They had better sense. <clears throat> in verse, thir verse uh, 12, it says, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. In the self same day, Noah, Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. See that right there? Count them. There's eight. Mm -hmm. There's only eight. See? <laughs> Verse 14, they and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 
after his kind in every fowl, after his kind in every bird of every sort. And they went in unto the ark, two and two of all flesh. So they, they went in, you can read it, they went in on their own. You would have thought that that would have been an example, a testimony to them that what's happening, even the animals know better. Even the animals are getting into the ark. Okay. So when the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, only four souls made it. Where were the rest? Where were the rest? Where were the rest? They perished. They perished. Okay. So it does it. So you can say, oh, but God is love. God is love. Yeah, He is love. That's why He loves us so much that He that He wants us to make it. He wants us to obey His word. He wants us to to make it in these last days. Amen. That's why he, he went to Calvary for us. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, it doesn't matter if, if we're the only ones or if the majority, if the majority of the people out there believe what they believe, we can't do what they believe. Okay? Yeah, that's right. we, have to, we have to get into the word of God ourselves and read it and believe it and obey it. We need to obey it. Somebody said, the word of God says it. I believe it. That settles it. Okay. There's a little minor error there. Because it doesn't matter if we believe it or not. The word of God says it, and that settles it. The word of God says it, that settles it. Whether we believe it or not, it's entirely up to us. It's up to us to believe the Word of God and change. It's up to us to believe it and obey it because it's in our obedience that we're going to be saved. It's in our obedience that we're going to accept the salvation of the Lord. Amen. He, he came and he, he did what He did so that we can have a chance, so that we can... We can live. He, he took it. They. He gave his life so that we can have life and to have it more abundantly. Amen. The devil's the one that comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Yes, he does. Amen. You know, so we we need to believe the word of God, no matter what. It doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter if other people don't do what we do. Okay, the Lord's the one that said, he said, because I asked him, Lord, what, what's going on? Why don't, why don't we get it? Why don't your people get it? And that's what he said, you know, they don't believe it. They don't believe the word of God because they see others. They see those other churches out there they see those other churches out there and and they uh they they look the way they look and and they serve you lord they say they serve you they say they love you but they don't they don't they don't do what the bible says the bible says if, if you love me keep my commandments mm -hmm. okay if we love the Lord, we'll keep His commandments. So we need to love the Lord and, and keep His commandments. We need to, to believe the Word of God, even when others don't. That's right. Okay. The, uh, the Lord, he, 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 um, he died on, on Calvary, on, on, Pente on Passover. Amen. On Passover, he died on Calvary. Not, not Easter. The only place you find Easter would, I, I didn't look for it, but it's in the book of Acts. And that's because they translated it wrong. wrong. It should have been Passover and they put Easter. 
That's the only place you find it, and there was a it was a translation error. And it probably wasn't an error. They, you know, it was those that translated it, those that, you know, they knew what they were doing. And they, it wasn't, um, it should have been Passover, because Pasqua is Passover. Yeah. Pasqua is, is, is Passover. Okay. No es Esther. No es Easter. It's it's Passover. And um no, I think it's in um in most of these scriptures in the in the gospels if you look toward the end of the of the of these books, you'll find that that it talks about Passover. In Matthew twenty six verse verses um, two, it's or verse one and two, it says, "And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days." is the feast of Passover and the Son of Man is betrayed. Okay. So he tells them in two days it's gonna be the feast of Passover and and the Son of Man is gonna be betrayed. Okay. And um let's see what is it In verse 17, Matthew 26, 17 says, Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The Master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at my at thy house with my disciples. See? In verse 19 says, And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Okay. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. So he, the Lord, he... He ate the Passover with them. He ate the Passover with them. Okay. And shortly thereafter, he was he was given over to to the ones that or the one that betrayed him gave him over. Okay. So the Lord, he he was the the Passover lamb. He was the Passover lamb, and, uh, and it, was, it was today. Today, over 2,000 years ago, the Lord gave his life for us. And he didn't, he didn't uh, they didn't take it, he gave it. Okay. So, so like I said, all throughout, if you were to read the um, the last of the chapters in in each one of these books, you would find that that the Lord gave His life at Passover. The Lord did not had nothing to do with this pagan holiday coming up next week, okay, the Easter, and that'll be another story, but. Um, Today the, is Passover. It began yesterday. So Jesus, uh, Jesus um, was crucified on Passover. He was crucified on Passover just before sunset. And um, in let's see. 
he, like I said, if you read the last of the chapters in Mark 14, 12, it says, and the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover. You know when they were to kill the Passover? On the 14th of the first month. On the 14th day of the first month that evening, they were supposed to kill the Passover. So it says, His disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? And the same thing. The same thing he says, um, He sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into a city and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him and wheresoever he shall go in, say, to the good men of the house, the master saith, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared there, make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. See? So it was the same day that, that he was betrayed. The same day he was betrayed. So the Lord was, he ate the Passover. He took the Lord's Supper with them. Or he instituted the Lord's Supper just like, like the teaching yesterday. And then he was crucified he was turned over so we we have example after example that the lord was crucified on passover he was the passover lamb okay so when people are going to celebrate easter and they say he was crucified friday resurrected sunday whatever well just know that he wasn't crucified on Friday. He didn't resurrect Sunday morning. The Lord was crucified on Passover. And today is Passover. It began yesterday. And today is... Today before sunset would have been when he gave up the ghost. So come to the altar and just remember... Just because everyone else is doing what they're doing, don't mean we have to. We have to know the Word of God. We have to know the Word of God. If they do what they do, ask them to show you scripture and verse. Why they do what they do. Why do they celebrate Easter? The Lord was crucified on Passover, not on Easter. Not on Easter. It's Passover. If you want to celebrate the holidays, celebrate the Jewish holidays. That would be Passover. Okay. It's not Easter. Okay. So come to the altar. Yeah. Yeah.